I lived a good life. My wife and two kids, I hope I made you proud. Keep working hard and just know you have already made me proud. To my parents, I thank you for instilling the morals and principles that made me that man I am today. Brother and sister, thank you for being the best siblings a brother could ask for and for always being there for me. As for everyone else that attended today, I thank you for coming and I hope I made a positive impact on your lives. I love you and God bless. The day you were born, uh, we, we went to the hospital. It was a beautiful day. Uh, and mom were there. Uh, I saw the stages of her labor. And first thing I remember was when you were actually born, when you came out of uh, mom. Uh, I noticed that your nose just looked just like your grandma's. But then all kinds of other thoughts went through my mind. And, things about how am I going to nurture this child or how to, what's our experience going to be and a lot of things go through your mind so it was a terrific experience it was wonderful you know when I first hugged you I mean you can actually I'm, I'm seeing it I'm re-experiencing it re-experiencing it again now with my grandchild with my grandchildren but when you actually hug your child or your grandchild it's just a, a feeling that seems to go through you and it's I guess it might consider that calling it the, the bonding process because it's, it just makes it keep it, it just keeps on growing as uh, life goes on. Uh, I remember I was in first grade uh, and uh, when I got home I remember I remember I can't I can't remember if it was my mom or my dad but I remember I was being told that my brother was born and I was so excited because I remember the times like I was telling my dad and my mom that I wanted a, a younger brother because I kept seeing a lot of other kids talking about their older brothers and younger brothers and I guess like I just saw like a lot of cartoons where they showed like companionship and stuff so I wanted I wanted to be like a, a strong figure towards my younger brother so I was so happy whenever I found out he was born. Uh, when I got to see him for the first time it was it's hard to remember everything, but it was really exciting getting to see his face. And I was like, I saw him through a window because I think my dad took took me and uh, held me up and showed me in the in the window, and it was it was exciting. So uh, that was just a rare moment and really enticing. I can honestly say, never throughout my life can I ever run into the notion that mistrust was even a factor because I've never been misfed or misled. I've never been hungry. I've always had everything I've ever wanted and more. And for that, I'm entirely thankful. And as far as I can remember as a, as a child, I've never, you know, recalled anything that was of malicious, malicious nature or anything like that. But as far as trust, I mean, it was, it was all there. They established rapport I mean, as I was a child and everything came out so smoothly. I never felt any sense of neglection, nothing. I was always, like I said, fed. There was food on the table. I always had a uh, roof over my head. I, I can't complain. Uh, I mean, they carry the usual uh, things that would, that would happen there that we'd get notes that he was biting other kids or things like that. And we'd have us sit down and we'd talk to you and say, hey, you're not supposed to be doing that. And, Sometimes you'd tell us, well, I mean, they're trying to bite me, and then, you know, mom would talk to you, and I would talk to you, and uh, eventually that way. We do different things, like if you did well, there's certain uh, rewards, like when I used to take you to go get an ice cream, you got a good grade, or things like that, sort of like a, uh, an incentive for you to keep on doing good in school and, and achieving, you know, good grades and things of like that nature. I guess in the family, I was more the disciplinarian. So like if you weren't supposed to open your gifts at a certain time or something like that, after after the first couple of times, you were already, you wouldn't even try anymore because you knew that it just wasn't the thing to do. After that, when we go in the future, then you were 
pretty well behaved because you already something in you already told you this is not appropriate to do. So I think uh, as a result of that, it gave you the confidence to start on your own behaving without having to be told. The one thing that I, I can recall the most that stuck out to me was the Christmases because it was so heartwarming and everything and I had no idea you know my parents were involved in anything but they made it that way and they made it special for me and within each Christmas I mean there was always a surprise and I never once had anything to complain about and they did that for me and that's one memory that I can honestly say that stuck out to me as a child. Well, I would take him to the Parks and Recreation and he got along very well with all the kids. As far as that's when I think he first took on sports quite a bit and was very enthused by it. Definitely basketball uh, and baseball too for a little while and then and then uh, he just and football as well. Football he was really good in football but eventually basketball took over and he was just that was his favorite sport. When I was a kid the one thing that my parents got me into was baseball. Quickly got disinterested in that. I got into football. I started liking that and track and I started liking that. Um, and then my brother introduced me to basketball at such a young age. I started really, really getting interested in that. The one thing that I wanted to focus on was yeah, school, of course, but basketball was a, was a priority for me. And uh, I got introduced to that game and I started loving it. Well, I just, I just remember that when my sister passed, uh, you know, the, that uh, it, was, it was very, very difficult time period for most of the family. That was, I think that was uh, something that he'd never forget because I remember he was crying quite a bit. From what I can recall, uh, when my aunt passed away, I was nine years old, but I was clueless as to what was going on. All I remember is seeing family crying left and right. And uh, I remember my dad trying to comfort me as much as possible. And I started bawling, crying. It definitely gave me a good idea of what death was like. I think once you were in, uh, in high school, one of the things that you look at always is what your what your siblings do, or what they're what they're doing, and you look up to them sometimes, and you you take certain things from from that and get ideas as far as well. Maybe I want to do that, or maybe I want to do something else or something similar. Uh, but I think I think when uh, you saw one of your siblings Frankie go into physical therapy that kind of interested you uh, when you saw your your cousin uh, Selena get into into a, a o, OT uh, that sort of interested you so you started gravitating towards that field and thinking well you know maybe this is something that uh, I might like as well I was just surrounded by such benevolent people and they were all so uh, heartwarming and always uplifting. I don't like to say friends, I usually call them brothers because that's what we still call each other to this day. I have recorded a bachelor's degree in general rehabilitative services and I've worked as a case manager for three years while I recorded my master's in rehab counseling from the University of the Rio Grande Valley. I currently work in a nonprofit organization that assists individuals with mental health issues here in San Antonio, Texas. I currently live with my loving wife and two beautiful children in a wonderful two-story home here in San Antonio. I truly feel fulfilled with what I have accomplished and I am living happily and comfortably today. The one thing I want to be remembered as uh, is somebody like I can honestly have said that I've left a fingerprint, whether it's on one life or on many lives, preferably many, but I want to be remembered as a, as a accomplished man, somebody who has affected many, many lives from many generations that I can honestly say people will remember my name and my name will live on, that my family, my grandchildren will look up to me and my kids will look up to me. Nobody will have any regrets meeting me. I would, I would just want to be remembered as just a good man.